So the battle resumes now. Um, we've just concluded the Saxon's turn. To my horror, I realised that Agatha, who probably is, is as horrified as I am at the sudden and awful death of her husband at the hand of a Viking berserker and, and a, a herdman, um, has failed to move. Um, movement obviously concluded before combat, and she's carried out no combat at all. We're going to give her the benefit of the doubt um, and consider moving her as if it were still the movement phase. Um, my temptation is to take her back to protect her daughter. Um, but we can see here that uh, Ragnar is wounded by her knife. Uh, she has a combat skill of three and his defence is six. We'd produce an attack on the one to two column. It would risk her becoming wounded, um, but there would be a small chance of pushing him back. Not enough to be worth the risk. So she'll flee her four movement points back towards her daughter, looking to defend her to the end. And as I said earlier, that was out of sequence. Um, and it's the least we can do for the, the poor lady. Um, we come now to the Vikings' turn, commencing with archery. Radar here can see Cedric moving in. He has a clear shot with a short bow, and there's no cover. Um, so the results will be on this line of results here on the table. And two is always, I can see that, isn't on the screen. So we're going to roll again. Um, and we can now see nine. That was unfortunate for Radar that his initial roll was invisible. Always only take visible rolls is my rule. Um, so nine is no result at all. Um, we come now, and this of course is indicating two turns uh, of Berserk status left um, to Torgrim. When I can find the two, which is hiding on this dice somewhere. So now we come to Viking movement. Edmund Torgrim is still berserk, two turns left, Edmund in charge and Ragnar. We'll come to Ragnar first because he's a berserker, he needs to roll eight or more to see if he goes berserk. Ten, he certainly does. So he's now got three turns of berserk status left. We'll keep those dice out of the way. He's obliged to move to the nearest character and attack, which is poor Adrian. To his horror now is engaged with two raging berserkers. Torgrim is still berserk and therefore is obliged to attack the nearest character, Adrian. Things are looking a bit desperate. Um, Edmund can start to move on in, seeking his uh, seeking his his potential wife. One, two, three, four. Five, confronting his mother, mother-in-law to be once again and raising his axe, uh, a traditional Viking greeting. Uh, we come to combat now. Edmund has got an attack of 14. Agatha has a defence of only three. That's four to one. Uh, attacks through doorways uh, don't provide combat odds changes. So we roll on the four to one column. 10 is a high result, which is bad for him, good for her. And 10, we can see it, 4 to 1 is no result. She battles him off uh, and is proving to become the heroine of this piece. Unfortunately, over here, uh, the two berserkers attacking Adrian, 7 and 12. They each had 7 to their combat strength, um, taking that to 14 and uh, 21. Um, obviously, this is quite a... Uh, a, a poor odd situation for Adrian, who's a who has a defence strength of only six. So in detail, uh, 21, 31, 35 to six. How many sixes in 35 is five? Uh, so it's a five to one attack. Um, two characters onto one shift it one in their favour to six to one, which is good odds for them. Six. Six. Six to one is E. And E is Defender Stunned. So Adrian's knocked to the ground unconscious. We flip his character piece over. And he remains so for the whole of the next Saxon turn. Um, this will allow the Berserkers to rampage on and leave poor Adrian alone next turn. Uh, we come to the Saxon turn now. Um, their archers now are in a good position. Uh, 
this archer here, Al, uh, can take a shot straight through at Torgrim. I would stop and check at this point whether stunned characters block line of sight. Uh, I haven't done that. Normally characters do block line of sight uh, for a short pose unless it's medium range, 15 or hexes or higher. Um, but given the situation I think it's uh, fair enough. We'll, we'll fly fast and loose with the rules here and check later. Um, the range obviously is less than 15. Uh, a Berserker um, is an elite character. So we'll be looking at this missile chart here. We're looking for low, 8. Despite our uh, overlooking a potential rules situation is nothing. Um, obviously Aldred here likewise uh, can take a shot here at Ragnar. Again looking at this line of results here with the short bow. 3, 3 produces an A. Defender retreats 2 hexes. Not sure that's as helpful as it could be. Um, Osric here, uh, he's left with a shot I think there's a line of sight blocked here by Cedric, so he'll need to shoot up at Radar here, uh, who's got light cover. So a regular troop, light cover, seven. Again, the arrow misses entirely. Um, so we come now to movement. Um, now Agatha's in an awful situation here, with Edmund pushing into the house. She moves out, her daughter leaps into the fray. Um, and Cedric likewise can get there, so he can get to get in there too. Um, and I think that's probably all of the movement for this turn. So the consideration is, does as El and Aldred here, the two archers, move into combat? Um, if they move less than half their movement allowance, they are actually allowed to shoot again after all combat is done. Um, sorry, just before combat is done um, and after movement. Um, the other interesting twist here is that if Edmund is forced to retreat but can't, he's wounded instead. Um, and this could be a more useful play out. So let's move them in one two, three, four, and one, two, three. So he's completely surrounded now. Um, the family are obviously deeply unhappy with his attentions. Um, and there's only one subsequent archery fire from Osric here, who's going to take another shot at radar having not moved. Um, so we come to the archery fire, table, light cover, looking for low, three. Three with a short bow in light cover produces an A result, forcing a retreat of two hexes. Now that could have been useful if these two archers had still been here because they could have now taken a shot at him in the open. Um, so we come to combat. Um, we're looking at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-one. Uh, to nine is two to one. Uh, two or more characters attacking produces a column shift in their favour. So that becomes a three to one roll. Again, looking for low as Edmund is surrounded. Eight, unfortunately, even at three to one, produces no result. Uh, he's in a difficult position nonetheless. We come to the Vikings' turn now. Um, they'll be shooting the archery fire first, radar here. Um, he's got no obvious targets that I can see. Um, Torgrim here is blocking his line of sight here and this tree to Osric here. So no archery fire is available. So now we come to movement. Um, these two berserkers are still berserk. Um, there's one turn left for Torgrim, two turns left. For Ragnar, they're obliged to move to the nearest enemy. One, two, one, two, three. So we'll move him first, and then we can move one, two, three. Putting Cedric into a very difficult position. Uh, and so um, Radar had better take his position up in the tree again. He's moved less than half his movement allowance, so he can shoot now. Taking a shot there at Osric in. Uh, in slope medium cover. Rolling low is good. One is as low as it gets. With a short burn that produces B wounding. 
for Osric and reducing his stats correspondingly as we replace his counter. Um, so now we come to combat. Uh, the Vikings are in a difficult position. If Edmund is forced to retreat, the result potentially of combat, um, then he takes a wound. He can't retreat anywhere now. You can see there's no access into this hex here. Um, so these two berserkers who are obliged to attack, they have no choice, will take on Cedric. Um, we know that the numbers are huge. There's 36 to 3. Um, is 10 to 1, 11 to 1. Modified another column up, two characters onto one, which is not directly relevant. Uh, looking for a low result for the Vikings. Uh, that's gone out of camera shot, so we'll roll again. And that's also out of camera shot. Let's try down there. Six. Six produces a G. Defender killed. Cedric is cut down from behind. Gives Edmund an opportunity now to retreat, should he wish. Um, he's going to attack Aldred, the most competent fighter in the situation and therefore the greatest threat. Uh, 14 to 5 is 2 to 1. This column here, 4. C result, attacker retreats 1 hex. Thank goodness he cleared the way, or at least thank goodness his berserker allies cleared the way, or he would have taken a wound at that point. And so we come to the end of the Saxons, uh, sorry, the Vikings turn.